Hi, welcome to Grace Lutheran Sunday School. Today I decided to come into what was going to be our godly playroom. I still hope that sometime in the future it will be a godly playroom. But in getting it ready for godly play, one of the things I created was an altar space. We have candles, flowers, we have a chalice, and a plate, just like we have on the altar for communion. Um, I have a small Bible that I keep on here. And I also have this green covering, which green because we were in the time of Pentecost. And um, one of the things that this lesson had us do each week is have a faith practice. And as part of that, I wrote those faith practice words on our green covering, our cloth. So I will put that back up here. Just know each week when we have a word, it's going on here onto our altar space. Today's word is prepare. I don't know if any of you guys are scouts or any of you girls are scouts, but I have an Eagle Scout in my house, and one of the things we always talk about in Scouts is to be prepared. And what does that mean, to be prepared? Have you ever had to get prepared for something? Have you had the joy of being a flower girl or, uh, uh, boy, what are the boys called? Been in a wedding, had to get dressed up, or have you been part of someone else's special occasion and you kind of had to prepare yourself, get dressed up special for it? Um, I know every morning we got to prepare to get out of the house to go to school or get ready for school, right? Got to make sure our computer's charged and we have our homework done. So we got to prepare for those things, right? To think ahead a little bit, plan. So being prepared, it's a pretty important thing. Um, with Scouts, one of the other things we do is talk about being prepared in our own homes. Do we have extra food in case... Um, something happens and we can't get out of the house. Do we have a plan if there's a fire in our house? Those are important things to have, right? To be prepared. So again, our lesson today is a parable that Jesus told about being prepared. And it comes from the book of Matthew, which we know is one of the four Gospels, um, the 25th chapter. Here we go. I'm going to read it to you guys. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was long in coming and all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going to go out. No, they replied, there may, be, there may not be enough for both of us, and you, and let me reread that. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The, vir uh, the bridesmaids who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the all others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Wow. You might want to reread that. This story has some deeper meaning, and we'll get to that. But let's think about these bridesmaids and their lamps. The five who thought ahead and had extra oil got to go to the wedding, and the five who didn't 
they missed out. Now, maybe you don't quite understand this oil concept. Maybe you've seen an oil lamp and you have to fill it up with oil and then the oil goes up into a wick and the wick burns and you have a lamp, you have a light. But I bet all of you understand batteries and how if you use up a battery, it doesn't, your flashlight doesn't work anymore. That would be the case with these ladies. Five of them thought ahead and brought extra batteries. And five didn't. So why do you think the ones who brought oil or batteries didn't share with the five who didn't plan ahead? Hmm. They may not have been able to. Like they said, if, if they gave them their oil, all of the lamps would have burned out. And they did think ahead. They did prepare, right? They planned ahead. Is there anything you guys keep in your house as like a, it's ready to go, like your school backpack? Do you, do you get it all ready so you don't have to be running around your house looking for stuff first thing in the morning if you're going to school? Or do you go hiking a lot and so you have a bag that's got first aid kit and flashlights and all that kind of stuff in it already so you don't have to, again, go looking for it? It's kind of cool if you have that sort of thinking ahead and planning ahead. Maybe you keep shopping bags by the front door so when you go in the grocery store, you just take your shopping bags with you. And they're right there. You don't have to think about it. That often is a problem in my house. I know my kids, they're a lot like me. They tend to dribble things around the house. So we try to have a place for stuff. So if you need it, you know where to look for, right? But have you ever missed out on something because you weren't prepared? You might have. I'm trying to think if there's anything it does happen. Or you get somewhere and you realize, oh, I should have thought about having this or that. Again, that's something we do with scouts. Like if you're going hiking, you need to look at what the weather is because you don't want to be out hiking and suddenly it gets, you know, temperature drops 20 degrees or it starts raining or snowing, right? You need to think ahead. I've had things like that happen where I was surprised by the weather. Hmm. But why did Jesus tell this parable? Well, he told it because he wanted to remind people to be ready for when God came. And how does this parable help us to, remind, to remember that? Well, again, the five bridesmaids who were prepared, they got to go into the, part, the, uh, the wedding. We might even think about that as they got to go to heaven. And the five who weren't preparing, they were left out in the cold. The five who were prepared were welcomed. And the five who didn't prepare weren't. So who are the people who help you to be ready to see God in your life? You need to thank those people because they are helping you prepare. So our word prepare today, it is important to be prepared for whatever is coming down the road. But that's just one of the things we need to remember, right? We have all these other faith practices. So let's remember these too, to be humble, generous, giving, forgiving, accepting, encouraging, and acting on all of these faith practices on a daily basis is what God wants us to do in order to be prepared for the day that we get to go to heaven. Um, I like the idea of being prepared. There's a lot of things we can't prepare for, and, and that can be hard, but there are things we definitely can prepare for. 
and Jesus coming is something we can prepare for. So I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. I would like to end with our blessing that I have really enjoyed. This is part of the, um, the blessing we've had each week. And so I ask you to pray with me. May God be in my head and in my thinking, in my eyes and in my seeing, in my ears and in my hearing, and, and listening, in my mouth and in my speaking, in my heart and my understanding, in my hands and in my serving. May God be in my practicing, because I want to act like Jesus. Amen. Have a great week.